Welcome back again. Okay, I feel fine. How are you? Alright, now this afternoon, let us revise light from the point of view of convex mirrors. Many students tell me that they have trouble studying convex mirrors. And I know what the problems are. Uh, all you have to do is just follow the guidelines. I will explain as we go along. Now, I'm sure that all of you will see light at the end of this lesson, meaning that you will be able to understand the, the best method of studying convex mirrors. It's very simple. All right? And again, after you have done the lesson, after you have done the revision, it is also output revision. You will go to the past year questions. But in this lesson, I will guide you along whereby you will have to do a lot of drawing. So, boys and girls, Get ready your pencils, your rulers. You can even use graph papers or plain papers to help you along. We are going to do some drawings. Now, the first thing that I would like you to do is take the piece of paper and draw, first and foremost, the principal axis. We are going to do ray drawing for convex mirrors. And after that, you are going to draw and label it convex mirror. From Perlis to Sabah, one of the most common mistakes among students is at this stage number two, they label it wrongly. Or worse still, they don't label. So you must always label it, write down this is a convex mirror so that you, you have no mistake. Because if not, you will be thinking that it is a lens. Again, the next one is P. What does P stand for? It is not P for pang, you know. It is P for pole. P-O-L-E. That's the pole of the mirror. Alright, let's say it is 10 centimeters from P to F. This is the focal length of the mirror. P-F is the focal length. So F is the focal point. I repeat. P-F is the focal length. F, capital F, is the focal point. Have you got the point? Okay, good. Next one is C. C is the center of curvature. And CF is actually the same distance as FP. You must get this right. Just now I mentioned that PF, in this case, let it be 10 centimeters. So what will PC be? 20 centimeters. And many students always um, make a mistake in this area. They forgot that F is the midpoint of PC. Alright? So now I will just place my object in front of the mirror as you can see. Okay, so what is your job to do? So you just follow me along, alright? So now we have to construct and draw the ray diagrams. We have to draw the rays going through the mirror, and after that, we should get the image. So what is the first ray that we must draw? Parallel to the principal axis, and then it will look as if it is coming, now it is reflected, okay, as if it is being reflected from the focal point. Alright, so that is ray number one. And what is ray number two? Ray number two, from the top of the object, it would look as though it is coming from C. Please pay careful attention to this point. Okay, you'll be asking me, Hey, Uncle Pang, how come got two direction one? Right? How come from there it goes to C and then it gets reflected? I'm going to explain this again clearly to you in a while. Alright? So, this is the second point. And thirdly, look at the point of intersection. Can you see the point of intersection here? So, the point of intersection, it would be here all in dotted lines because it is a virtual image. Alright? So, I'll repeat. The first line is this. The first 
first line 1, 2. Alright, this is considered the first construction. The second line is from the top of the object, it goes to C and it comes back. Alright, and thirdly, you get the point of intersection and this will be the virtual image in dotted lines. Okay, so now let's write down. This is the image. Very important for us always to write down the three characteristics of the image. What is the first characteristic? It is virtual. This is a mirror object on this side. And the image is on the opposite side. The mirror is here. So this is a virtual image. Is it bigger or smaller? It's an upright image. And it is a diminished image. Or you can write smaller than the object. A soft reminder here, boys and girls. In the examination, if you are asked, give one characteristic of the image. You must state one. Don't state three. Because if you state three and you make a mistake, then you might lose your marks. Alright? So, you just have to answer the question. If the question says, give two, you give two. One characteristic, you give one characteristic. So, this is set number one. Alright? Now, what about set number two? In question number two, it's a very similar case. I'll go very fast. Alright? You have to write all this. You have to keep on drawing. And one reminder, boys and girls. In this topic on ray drawing, you mustn't read. You can read 20 times, 50 times, 100 times. It's useless. Okay, I've got students who agree with me. They have experienced it. What you must do is to draw. Keep on drawing, drawing and drawing. You will be fine. Alright? So again, I have put the object much further away. Alright, look at the drawings. <laughs> So this is the first ray. The second ray would be going through C and coming back. Oh yes, I remember in my previous lesson, I was explaining C as the center of curvature. All right, And you can refer to the lesson and you will understand why it is that whenever we have a ray going through C, it always comes back. All right, It is reflected along the same path. I'll explain it again later, very briefly here. So point of intersection is here, and I will have my image. So again, what are the three characteristics? You can tell me it's going to be virtual, upright, and it's smaller than the object. Alright, just allow me to explain something to you now. Okay? Why is it that this part, why is it that from C, it will go to C and it gets reflected along the same direction? Why? This is C, the center of curvature. So I'm going to draw a big arch, very a big part of a circle here. Alright? There is not enough space for a full circle. So you just imagine that C is the center of a big circle, alright? So you would understand that C, I name another point here, I call it X. C, X is the radius of the circle. And now I can actually draw another line here. Alright? I draw another line here, I call it T, X, R. TXR is actually the tangent to the circumference of the circle. And this is 90 degrees. And since this is 90 degrees, you know that any ray of light going to the mirror, it will be reflected because it is right angle. So you have to understand the mathematics of this part, then you will be alright. Okay? 
Now what you can do is go to the lesson on uh, concave mirror. Okay, over there I explain it again. So there are two sides. Uh, both lessons I've also explained it. Alright, so do you understand this so far boys and girls? Good. One more thing. Alright. Compare the differences in the image if we increase the object distance. Look at the object distance here. It's small. Look at the object distance. It's big. Alright, I'm going to go back and forth. Number one, number two. You can compare the differences in the image. Alright, you can tell me what the image is like. Can you see? Number one, the image is bigger. In number two, the image is smaller. Back. So when the object is nearer to the, to the mirror, what happens? The image is bigger. When it is further, the image is smaller. Alright, very clear, isn't it? Okay. Now, because of time factor, let me just go very quickly and let you compare something else. Okay, I'll just run this through. You will just look at it and then it's a good, uh, good revision. Alright, you see it very fast. Okay, number four. Now, I'm doing number three and number four because I would like you to compare something. Alright. Okay, I'm going back to number three now. Compare the differences in the image if we reduce the focal length of the convex mirror. I change the focal length. Alright, look at number three. Where is F? Further away from P. Look at number four now. Where is F? It's closer to P. So the focal length now is smaller. I have reduced the focal length. And when I reduce the focal length, what happens to the image? Compare the differences in the image. Alright? So I'm actually now training you boys and girls how to answer examination questions as well. Very often, we are asked to compare between one case and another case. I'll go back to number three. Focal length now is longer. In question four, focal length shorter. Alright, look at number three. Number four. Number three, number four. Very clear, isn't it? So, what, is, what are the differences? You would notice that in number three, when the focal length is longer, the image is, yeah, you can see, bigger. So now the image becomes smaller when the focal length is smaller. And it is also nearer to the mirror. The image is nearer. Alright? So, in today's lesson, basically, what have we covered? You have learned how to draw the lines, draw the rays, and you must practice. There is no shortcut to success. And once again, I would like to remind you, please don't read and try to memorize. It's not possible. You will have to draw it like the way I've shown it to you. Just keep on drawing. Draw it again and again and again. Then you will be fine. Alright? So with that, I would like to say thank you very much for your attention again. And uh, thank you, and may God bless you.